Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, let us pray for the word. Mighty and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for bringing us this far, to the last Monday of June 2020. Indeed, the Heavenly Father, it has taken your hand. And Heavenly Father, even as you continue to give us hope through your word, we want to praise you and glorify your holy name. Speak to us, O Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, minister to each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to welcome you this morning to uh, the Daily Encounter. And I pray that the Lord will continue to minister to you through the Holy Spirit uh, so that the Word can continue to uh, build you and more so to give you hope in these times that we are living. Genesis 9, verse 20 to 25, uh, Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay and covered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their soldiers' shoulders. Then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so they could not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will be, will he be to his uh, brothers. Now, the story of Noah <clears throat> starts from Genesis chapter number 5, whereby we find that he is a son of Lamech and ninth in descent from Adam. Then we find the story of the flood narrated in Genesis chapter number 6 from verse 11 to chapter number 9 and verse 19. God chooses Noah because he is a righteous man and he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. When God beheld the corruption uh, that was on the earth, he was determined to destroy the entire world. And at this point, he instructed Noah to build the ark. I was just contemplating at the kind of intimacy that Noah had with God, that yes, is given an assignment, and the Lord gives him the exact instructions on how uh, to build the ark. And Noah, following these specifications, he makes the ark, and when the floods came, then the, the ark floated and lasted in water for almost a year. Now, for 40 days it rained, for months they floated. I believe, brethren, that you know this feeling. You have stood where Noah stood. You've known your share of floods, flooded by sorrow at the graveside of your loved one, stress at the office. Anger at the disability in your body or the inability of your spouse. You've seen the flood water of lack, misery, hopelessness, lies, and you have likely seen the sun set on your hopes as well. You've been on Noah's boat and you've needed what Noah needed. You have needed some hope. Sometimes all we need is a little hope. That is all Noah needed, and I believe that is all we need at this time. And that is all that Noah received. He sent a living on a scouting mission. It never returned. But finally, when the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf that we find in Genesis uh, chapter number 8 and verse 11 and which forms the theme of our lesson this morning, the olive branch or the sign of hope. Noah faced uh, extinction threat like we are facing today from this flood of COVID-19. 
the world as he knew it was gone, yet his hope could not be destroyed. He sent out the leaven and the doves to get a sense of when and not if God would ease the flood. So today we are not uh, wondering if God will remove this COVID-19, but when God will remove the COVID-19 uh, from us. So think of your life as an ark. And I have a question or two for you, brethren, this morning. Are you docked in a pot, and this is in Christ Jesus, feeling safe and secure and full of hope? Or are you drifting a little because you are not in Christ? Another question I ask myself this morning is, what happens to this icon of faith, Noah, who walked with God and they were communing with him and being given specific instructions on how to construct the ark? In Genesis 9:21, which was our reading scripture, we find four things. One is drunkenness, two is sin, three, shame, and finally, a curse, they all follow in quick succession. And you wonder how did Noah come to this point? My caution to you, my brother and my sister this morning, as a soldier in the army of the Lord, watch out, watch out, watch out. For as we read in Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 8a, for the end of a matter, is better than the beginning. Prayer for the weak. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for making yourself known to us through your word. Thank you for filling its pages with stories of hope. Thank you for keeping the spark of hope alive in us, no matter how dark our world is, especially these days with the COVID-19. Bless our efforts to understand better the incredible hope you offer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.